Bazda Cave, within modern-day Turkey, is unquestionably an astonishing place. An enormous cave system that many people simply assume is a natural formation, with select areas quarried out, subsequently used to build numerous ruins throughout the area. However, what many people have seemingly overlooked, and we presume funded academics have deliberately ignored, are the signatures left all over the stonework throughout the network of caverns, strongly indicating that this huge complex was once, somehow, hewn by ancient man. Also, and perhaps most intriguingly, is that this task was completed using a number of different advanced tools, whose marking, thanks to ours and others' astute research, has also been found scarred upon many other ancient sites, some located far away from this enigmatic cave system. The stone, once quarried out to create this enormous cavern, subsequently located as having been used to create a number of remarkable precision-cut monuments, including a once-existing wall which surrounded an ancient site known as Hiron. Additionally, due to the realization of this quarried stone having been used in Hiron, in addition to our own previous research, we have successfully linked Bazda to yet more ancient ruins, all dated to vastly different eras within history. Thanks to our channel's creator possessing a photographic memory, we have correlated undeniable characteristic similarities, connecting many of these ancient sites throughout the world. Firstly, the signatures left by advanced stone-cutting technologies, tool marks left upon the cave system's walls. Scars upon the stonework, which are present at many other sites, Baalbek in Lebanon, Petra in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry within China, and at least two rock-cut monuments within India, the roof of a precision-cut cave, and an unfinished temple known as Veduvan Coil. This crescent-shaped scarring, often of an overlapping fashion, we feel, is reminiscent of scars left by modern-day tunnel boring equipment. Yet due to the lack of in-depth research surrounding such anomalies, with these tool marks, as far as we are aware, only receiving limited attention at Baalbek and merely photographed at Yangshan, have begun to name such markings ourselves in an effort to categorize and identify such curiosities being discovered worldwide with these now known to us as crescent cup and ring marks. The second form of scarring found upon much of the cave's roof, now known to us as groove and ridge markings, are distinctly different in form and appearance to the crescent cup and ring marks. These rows of grooved scars, however, are identical to those found in plain sight upon the unfinished obelisk located within Aswan Quarry, Egypt. A stone monument well over a thousand tons in weight, which has long been academically argued as having been abandoned where it lay, due to a fault line discovered during the quarrying process. However, interestingly, others have presented strong evidence that this crack appeared later within history. A fellow alternative researcher, Chris Dunn, argues within his book Advanced Technology in Ancient Egypt that the crack happened later on in the obelisk's life, and that the monolith was abandoned before the fault appeared. Backing up his claim, he shows that details upon the monument were being engraved over the top of the location of the fault line, an undertaking that would have clearly been illogical. Although he does not put forward a postulation as to why this crack occurred, we believe it may have been due to a shift in the surrounding geography, more than likely a ground-shifting earthquake not only cracking the obelisk, but possibly due to and accompanied by a cataclysmic event, which quite possibly caused the demise of the civilization, who were liberating the obelisk, thus leaving it unfinished. But I digress. 
Our focus is upon the scars left by enigmatic, clearly advanced stone-cutting tools, preserved with clarity upon the erosion-resistant granite of the obelisk. These exact markings also undeniably litter the ceiling of the Bosda cave. Additionally, these groove and ridge marks are also found upon the megalithic, often polygonal stonework within Peru, at Cusco, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, to name but a few. The third set of signature scarring upon the cave stone walls links Bosda Cave to another similarly gigantic artificially created cave system, known as Longyu Caves, located within China. Once an undoubtedly immense excavation, yet the quarried stone from this undertaking has never been located. Millions of tons of stone seemingly vanished from the face of the earth. However, thankfully, the quarried stone from the Bosda cave systems, as mentioned, was utilized and located. However, the civilization responsible for shaping these quarried stones at Haran were unquestionably responsible for several other sites found around the world. YouTube channel New Earth, first linking these curiously shaped stones to Nimod's fortress on Mount Hermon with Jerash in Jordan. With us continuing this trail of connecting ancient dots, thankfully due to the uniqueness of stonework. Let's compare the Nimrod fortress with this uh, historic city in Jordan, which according to mainstream sources was conquered by the Romans and they built their typical Roman architecture consisting of columns and so on on the top of the older ruins. So here they are assuring us that the Nimrod style large blocks are pre-Roman. Now those very same blocks when they are in Baalbek they are telling us it's Roman. In the Temple Mount they are again assuring us that they are some 2000 years old. In Bosnia they are telling us they are whatever, three or more thousand years old, and of course they are built by some obscure unknown tribe of which even the name they had to fabricate. Enabling us to link the Royal Kurgan in Crimea to New Earth's discoveries, and now to the ancient ruins of Haran in Turkey. Not only can we argue that this cave system was indeed man-made, but is the only site we know of that possesses such an array of these enigmatic stone-cutting technology scars, allowing us to successfully link it to at least 15 ancient sites around the world. The cave itself, Basran, Haran, Baalbek, Petra, Jerash, Yangshan, Longyu, Vetavan Coil, Malmala Param, Cusco, Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, Nimrod's Fortress, and the Royal Kurgan possibly many others we are yet to recognize. In conclusion, the vast array of different, as yet unidentified, advanced stone-cutting equipment scars present within the cave, each leaving its own unique signature upon the stone. The shaping of these stones, unique to an unknown civilization's signature handiwork, found worldwide, used within an array of as yet unexplained ruins academically claim to be of vastly different ages and the work of vastly different cultures. We find it not only clear evidence of academic fallacy, but incredibly compelling. Mustang, formerly the Kingdom of Lo, northern Nepal. A group of man-made structures can be found in this part of the Himalayan mountains, which defy modern understanding. Not only does this place defy understanding, but the ancient builders appear to have somehow defied gravity. At the end of the 18th century, the Kingdom of Lo was annexed by Nepal. 
Mustang was a restricted demilitarized area until 1992, which makes it one of the most preserved regions in the world. Reports from the area spoke of extremely ancient human dwellings, chiseled into a sheer cliff face, within a gorge which dwarfs the Grand Canyon. The caves are many thousands of years old, they are dug into a vertical mountain face, at least 150 feet in the air, with no way of accessing them from the ground, or above. How ancient people built these caves, or indeed why remains a mystery. Around 10,000 man-made caves dot the gorge, as if an entire colony of people lived perched on a mountainside. They appear to have been built to hide from something, rather than a fortification. Adventure photographer, Corey Richards, climber Pete Athons, archaeologist Mark Alden Defeer and a team of explorers, visited the caves to try to unearth their hidden relics. They found extremely valuable and semi-ancient Buddhist artifacts, along with the Buddhist relics, ancient, semi-mummified, human remains were discovered within a few of the caves. These bodies have been dated at more than 3,000 years old, predating Buddhism by some time. It would appear that how ancient they were precisely, remains a guarded secret. Climbing into the sky caves was no easy feat, the rock was unstable and posed a real danger to the team of explorers. In fact climbing into the caves was so dangerous, Mr. Richards lost his footing, fell and broke his back. On another assignment to Mustang, the following year, videographer Lincoln Else was hit by a falling rock, fracturing his skull. In some of the caves, skeletons dating from the 3rd to the 8th centuries, which had cut marks on the bones that may have been inflicted during the practice of sky burial, were discovered. This is where the body's flesh is left to be eaten by vultures. Sky burial is still practiced in many remote regions in the Himalayas to this day. However, some believe these cave systems even predate these remains, with some evidence to support such suspicions. The erosion found on the cave systems shows signs of many millennia of light rainfall. Some have here time to virtually erode away. Who do you think built the Mustang Sky Caves? Why do you think they built them, and how? These magical caves show such abnormality to modern understanding, nearly nothing of their existence can be explained. The underground cities of Cappadocia, Turkey, number more than 200 and are spread across the entire region. It is highly possible that there is many more lying below the surface, just waiting to be found. Of all the underground cities discovered so far, the most awe-inspiring is perhaps the Derinkuyu city. It was discovered by accident in 1963. When a local family was renovating a house, a wall gave way to reveal a passage that led to this underground network. According to National Geographic, it is 11 levels deep, descending more than 280 feet to the bedrock, covering an area of over 4 miles squared. It includes temples, tombs, shops, living quarters, and even livestock pens. Over 15,000 air shafts were built into its design and would have been enough room to comfortably house approximately 20,000 people. The underground city has extending passages that connected to other neighboring and underground water well systems, providing fresh water. What is especially interesting regarding this underground world is the evidence to suggest that they were hiding from something terrifying. A sophisticated security system consisting of a particular build design accompanied by numerous gigantic rolling stone blocking doors that would seal the city from the inside. Moreover, its multi-layered design meant that each level could be sealed off from the next level using this same system. Just what were these people hiding from? Whatever it was, they obviously preferred to run rather than confront it. The structure was excruciatingly carved into the underground rock and is as strong today as the day it was built, safely accommodating guests such as archaeologists and tourists. Whoever built the network obviously had an advanced knowledge of stoneworking, architecture, engineering, and the local geography. Aging the structure has proven very difficult. There are no existing quarries, waste piles, or tools to examine. Furthermore, there are no records documenting its construction, or people who may have lived there. Also, unfortunately, many cultures have used the underground towns over the centuries. According to UNESCO, it is believed that the first signs of monastic activity in Cappadocia date back to the 4th century, at which time acting on the instructions of Basil the Great in order to resist attacks from the Arabs, the people should band together into small, local communities and begin inhabiting cells dug into the rock. 
Therefore, modern academia tends to conclude that they were likely built by the Phrygian people around 800 BC. Yet, it is also a strong possibility that they are far older than this. By the bishop's instruction, they are to inhabit, not build. Therefore, it's safe to assume he was aware of their existence, rather than the person who thought them up. Some believe the underground caves were constructed by the very ancient Persian king Yima. Yima, attributed as mythological by many, is said to have had a lifespan of more than 900 years, a common feature of biblical figures as well. The Zoroastrian text Vendidad states that Yima built an underground city on the orders of the god Ahura Mazda to protect his people from a catastrophic winter. Much like the account of Noah in the Bible, Yima was instructed to collect pairs of the best animals and people as well as the best seeds in order to reseed the earth after the winter cataclysm. This was before the last ice age, 110,000 years ago. There have recently been some astonishing academically contradictory discoveries unearthed throughout Europe. Archaeologists have been discovering a network of underground tunnels, apparently somehow cut throughout the Stone Age, which cover the territories of Spain, Turkey, and most of the European continent. Their approximate age, according to funded archaeologists, is no less than 12,000 years. Yet how people living within the Stone Age, people without any form of metal tools or chisels, managed to cut thousands of miles of tunnel systems is clearly a considerably contradictory mystery. Thousands of underground tunnels stretching from Scotland to Turkey that have, predictably, placed the many submissive, order-taking funded scientists throughout the academic world at a dead end to explain. However, if one presumes, as the evidence we share here on our channel often suggests, that a past, now lost, highly advanced civilization once flourished here on our Earth, their creation is less of a challenge to explain. Yet the purpose for their existence will remain an enigma. Were they created by a group attempting to hide from something? Or possibly, they were ancient smuggling tunnels left by members of this lost civilization once used to smuggle items from ancient settlement to settlement found throughout Europe. German archaeologist Dr. Heinrich Kusch in his book Secrets of the Underground Doors to the Ancient World, states that the tunnels were dug beneath hundreds of Neolithic settlements all across Europe, and the fact that so many tunnels have survived indicates that the original network was much larger than that which still survives. Quote, In Bavaria alone, we discovered 700 meters of these underground tunnels. In the Austrian Styria, we found 350. And throughout Europe, there were thousands of such tunnels, from the north of Scotland stretching to the Mediterranean itself." End quote. The fact that these tunnels have been identified as having been cut at least 12,000 years ago should indicate to all those still with the capacity of critical thought that they are undoubtedly far older than this, as to state that they were somehow cut by people with literally no tools to their disposal, to us seems laughable. The tunnels are all relatively narrow, being about 70 centimeters in width, just enough for an adult man to travel through. In some places, there are small rooms, storage chambers and seats, clearly indicating that these cave systems were used by a number of people at a time. How did our ancient ancestors create such an awe-inspiring network of tunnels without the utilization of some form of tunneling equipment, lighting, and indeed smelted metal tools. It is not surprising to us or anyone who has paid attention to the limited tale of events put forward by academia that these tunnels remain a perplexing ancient artifact for them to explain. Yet we feel they are clear evidence of a past civilization, having crudely cut these tunnels possibly for some nefarious reason we are yet to unravel. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. There are many ancient anomalies which can be found upon the Giza Plateau and indeed across much of ancient Egypt as a whole. Many areas which are clear evidence of a highly capable, highly intelligent past civilization who once called this landmass home. Not only are the ancient pyramids a clear feat of incredible ancient engineering, possibly the most astonishing found the world over, 
but many of the still existing ancient temples are testament to a now lost, yet once incredibly advanced ancient civilization. And although many academics are funded to push the theory that the pyramids, having once been the burial places of Egyptian kings, the truth that we still do not actually know the original purpose for these ancient structures remains. Not only do these structures, along with many other areas, such as the basalt floor found at their feet, still show clear evidence of lost technology unquestionably left by high-speed, high-rotation stone-cutting technologies, and many of the tombs and other artifacts found throughout the ancient ruins unarguably once machine-worked upon enormous, as yet unexplained lathes. But there also exist some astonishing features within the record books, documented anomalies within our own antiquity, regarding some of the biggest yet still existing anomalies within ancient Egypt. Anomalies that although are now all but lost to history, have been recorded and documented since our own records began, specifically Roman records. The Colossi or Colossus of Memnon are listed as containing some of the largest megalithic blocks that have currently been recorded and investigated across the world. And although these statues have virtually crumbled over the eons, records of these statues stretches back many centuries. Features now largely, and we believe, deliberately ignored by mainstream academics, these statues once possessed an astonishing characteristic, one many claimed as a divine experience, one which would draw countless individuals on a pilgrimage across the desert, to witness at first light every morning. The Colossi of Memnon were built from a single piece of stone each. They are oriented towards the sunrise at winter solstice, and throughout modern study have had a number of fearless individuals expose their true past grandeur to the world. Estimates for the two statues' original weight are most commonly noted to have been around the 1,000 tons mark, with the most famous report within R. T. Gould's A Book of Marvels, 1937, which contained an estimate of 1,200 tons. The statues are made from blocks of quartzite sandstone, which was quarried at El Gabal El Amar, near modern-day Cairo, then transported 420 miles to Thebes. And although modern academia would like to attribute these feats to our more modern ancestors, namely the ancient Egyptians, any logical explanation of how this feat was achieved, or indeed how they were so precisely carved, remains absent from all explanations of these monumental statues, not only their transport and creation, but how these ancient monuments used to sing. Early Greek and Roman tourists who came to hear the sound gave the statue the name of Memnon. Memnon was a hero of the Trojan War, a king of Ethiopia, who led his armies to Troy's defense, but was ultimately slain by Achilles. Memnon was said to be the son of Eos, the goddess of dawn, and after his death, his mother is said to have shed tears every morning. The singing of the statues was attributed to this mother mourning for her son. The earliest written reference to the singing statues comes from the Greek historian and geographer Strabo, who claimed to have heard their song during a visit in 20 BC. The second-century Greek traveler and geographer Pausanias compared it to the string of a lyre breaking. Others described it as the striking of brass or a strange, ghostly, almost divine whistling. For more than two centuries, the singing statues brought tourists from all over the empire, including several Roman emperors. Many left inscriptions on the base of the statue, reporting whether they had heard the sound or not. Nearly 90 inscriptions are still legible upon their base today. Who created these statues? How were they able to sing? They are clearly an astonishing ancient accomplishment, once achieved by a now lost advanced civilization. Monuments which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered but a few of the jewels that can be found in the crown of now lost civilizations which once dwelled within India. And since this, we have found the possible remnants of a number of different flourishments and additional devolutions within the granite historical record of our planet. 
proof which we can now confidently demonstrate via a number of antediluvian sites which clearly display this cyclical behavior. The Allura Cave system, for example, one of the most well-finished and thus precisely executed of which Kalish Temple, a site we have previously covered. Yet I digress. There is no possible way to define how long a religion can survive. As such, the fact that at least three different religious influences can be found upon these miraculous, enormous ancient ruins, once hewn directly from the bedrock of Earth, is proof enough of extraordinary antiquity. Along with these three different religious ages, our previous research among Elora's cave have ourselves found separate tool marks we feel logically left by a mere two separate civilizations, one of the famous cup and spoon mark era, claimed across northern Europe as Neolithic, while the other found upon Kalish and many others throughout India, indicative of yet another world-faring, yet far more globally powerful and capable, now lost civilization. According to modern paradigm, quote, the rock-cut activity at Elora Cave, three phases from the 6th century to the 12th century. The earliest caves, 1 through 12, discovered between the 5th and 8th centuries, reflect the Mahayana philosophy of Buddhism then prevalent in this region. The Brahmanical group of caves, 13 through 29, including the renowned Kalish, Cave 16, was excavated between the 7th and 10th centuries. The last phase, caves 30 through 34, reflecting the Jaina philosophy." End quote. However, what we do know for a fact, and quite contradictory to the aforementioned mainstream theory, is that this series of 34 caves were all indeed planned and constructed within the abilities available at the era of each of their constructions. Some indeed more modern and thusly planned and executed to a more primitive ability. But Kalish and many others along the network are and were incredibly, seemingly impossibly well executed, with unbelievable artistic and complex vision, created with technologies to cut rock of unbelievable and now lost and forgotten technologies, and thus abilities. It is popularly accepted belief systems attached to the sites are of a modern age. However, even this cannot be confirmed. Furthermore, we know that to create such a site would, in the modern age, take unimaginable effort and technologies, taking many, many years. Ergo, no matter what the mainstream explanation may be, or indeed the mounting areas of research and the enigmas we continue to stumble upon, adding to our list of areas of interest, all remain a growing and as yet unsolved mystery which we find highly compelling. An astonishing collection of ancient evidential items and rediscovered historical factors have allowed the argument for an once lost history to have existed, all but now a foregone conclusion. A civilization at which some point in our distant past was lost, yet a once highly advanced worldwide culture. The proof that these ruins were all built by the same people or by those who were in contact with each other worldwide is now, we feel, overwhelming. Yet their technological capabilities were just as equally astonishing. Cut from nearly every type of strata, ruins with such precision, not only do they seemingly appear to have been cut with laser technologies, but the Barbara Caves is undoubtedly the jewel in the crowd. When previously looked at by us, we were astonished by the finish of the cave's walls, both in surface and angle which, thankfully, due to the structure's sheltered nature, have survived for at least 2,300 years in incredible condition. Even more astounding, however, is that this precision has recently been confirmed using modern sonar-like technology, allowing for an incredibly detailed map of each cave to be created, each cave's image made from millions of points of reference revealing, for the first time in well over 2,000 years, just how incredible the creators of these cave systems were, a feat many now believe we could not achieve ourselves. Perfect 180 curvatures on the roofs, perfect 90-degree angles on the doorways, 
perfectly flat floors and perfectly vertical walls, the creation of the caves was simply perfect. We feel it is undeniable that whoever created these caves had in their possession incredibly advanced stone-cutting technologies. Yet how this was done and with what are questions which we find hugely intriguing. Phoenix Hill, Xianbi China. In 1994, an extremely mysterious discovery would be made. Considered by the Chinese as the ninth ancient wonder of the world, a series of 24 ancient, artificial caves were discovered. Specialists have been quietly astounded by them. And the more we learn, the more of a spectacular and mysterious achievement they are seen to be. The first thing that struck explorers were their size. Each cave has a minimum floor space of 1,000 square feet, an unimaginable undertaking at the time they were thought to have been constructed. Officially dated prior to the dynasties of China, which began 3,000 years ago, meaning they are very, very old. The walls of the caves are scarred with strange uniform tool marks. The weird thing about the markings, is that they are all set on a 60 degree angle, every single chisel mark within the cave system without exception, is on an exact 60 degree cutting angle. This has led many to suspect that the caves must have somehow been dug using advanced machinery. However, because this feature is unique within our current knowledge of ancient structures, the angle of cutting could indeed have been made by hand, with the purpose of decoration, but this would have made the job of cutting them out even more laborious. Additionally, once the caves had been assessed and explored, a remarkable thing was realized. Although the caves were the result of excavating thousands and thousands of tons of rock, this rock seems to have vanished from existence. There is no trace of a spoil pile anywhere to be seen, it is as if the caves have always been there. No traces of their construction has ever been found anywhere, no cave writings, drawings, tools, or human remains, and nothing within historical records. The cave's construction simply doesn't make sense, and any evidence for their construction doesn't exist. Add to this the fact that the cave systems prelate Chinese civilization by some time, and show evidence of being cut out by machine. And the Long Yu Caves undoubtedly become a curiosity to scientific explanation and historical understanding, to say the least. These remarkable caves are a very strong and solid piece of evidence to suggest that advanced cultures have already been and gone on this planet, or that visitors of extraterrestrial origin visited the planet prior to human development. As far as I am aware, these are the only two possible scenarios for the builders of such a construction. The caves' systems are well over 3,000 years old and still intact. Whoever was capable of constructing them was also capable of disposing of the huge mountains of rock that would have been excavated without leaving any evidence of how they did this or indeed built the caves anywhere. The caves are known as one of the largest underground complexes ever discovered. The fact that more is not heard about this wonderful place is testament to their extraordinary existence, meaning no one within the scientific community can or want to try to explain them. Also, which I found highly interesting, when they were discovered they were completely filled with water, whether this was one sort of water, has not been disclosed, but I have personal suspicions as to how this water came to rest within these underground caverns. No fish were found within the caves, which many found odd. However, if you suspected that the waters be residual leftovers from a great flood, water from the great seas of earth, then over time, salt levels would plummet and fish accustomed to sea water would have died. Who do you think built the Long Yu Caves? The cave's existence hint towards a hidden history here on our planet, a history that we must unravel if we are ever to fully understand ourselves and our home. Dan Hall, yet pronounced Dane Hall after the Danes. Intriguingly, their purpose, although almost exclusively cut into chalk strata, is completely unknown, and although claimed to have been created by an invading party, were solely created within Kent and South Essex, consisting of a small vertical entry tunnel, which then opened into what could be described as spacious multi-room living quarters, with the largest inner chambers measuring some 18 feet wide, and some set at a depth of over 80 feet, particularly those found in Hangman's Wood, Essex, which, interestingly, is now known as a site of special biological importance. These unusual chambers have baffled all who have investigated them. 
Undeniably, dating prior to the documentation of history in England, cut into an unusually hard variety of chalk, all of which showing no deer horn, metal or flint tool marks, or any of the stone cutting, and many individuals who have investigated the inner chambers have concluded that the Dane holes must have been cut into individual cube blocks and then somehow extracted from the chambers. How this was achieved, however, is yet another mystery. Thankfully, due to Hangman's Wood being a preserved area, more than 50 Dane holes still exist within the three-hectare site. What were the Dane holes used for? Who could have built them? Were they, like a number of other underground chambers we have covered in the past, found the world over, once built to be lived in, clearly attempting to shield oneself from an exterior threat? If so, why? Were ancient peoples in the UK also attempting to hide from something? An initial investigation of the Dane holes was undertaken in the 1800s, with almost nothing regarding the investigation into their origins having been undertaken since, although, fortunately, they are now receiving independently funded attention, the results of which will be available soon. We will, of course, keep you posted. Who dug the Dane holes? What were they used for? We find said questions highly compelling. A little over a year ago, we shared the story surrounding a mysterious discovery that was once claimed to have been made deep within cave systems within Ecuador, which some believe were originally man-made. A discovery that, although now concealed from the world, was photographed, studied, and documented thanks to the array of artifacts which had been amassed by an individual known as Father Crespi. An entire, seemingly alien metallic library, complete with hundreds of sheets of gold, platinum, and other precious metals, hammered out to reveal an astonishing unknown language, clearly left by a people of tremendous capabilities. The caves in which this find is claimed to have been made is known as Cueva de los Teos. And although such discovery is denied by the Ecuadorian authorities, the Ecuadorian and, interestingly, United Kingdom's governments funded an extensive search of the cave systems soon after the claims became public. It attracted the attention of numerous individuals who traveled into the depths of these caves, including Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon. What we wish to focus on this video, however, is the enormous, seemingly man-made caverns which are found to be within the cave systems. We feel, if these cave systems are indeed one day admitted, as having been artificially hewn from the bedrock, then this would undeniably reveal tremendous flaws in academia's claims as to the geology and indeed true history of the area. The cave system is so enormous, it has yet to be fully explored by modern man. Yet what has been explored has revealed highly compelling features, which corroborate earlier claims of an artificial origin. The Moritza portal, for example, named after Juan Moritza, the individual who claims to have originally discovered the metallic library, is clearly of an artificial nature. The question is, why go to such lengths to construct this natural-looking cave system? Was it all created merely to hide this library? And if so, how important could the information held within be? And why did such a find attract the attention of the first man on the moon? Did the astronaut know something we are yet to discover? Juan Moritza signed affidavit dated 8th of July 1969 in which he confessed to a meeting with the Ecuadorian president, where he received complete control over his discovery, provided he could provide photographic evidence and an independent witness corroborating the discovery. When Moritza met with von Däniken in 1972, he took him to a secret entrance, through which they entered a large artificial hall within the cave system. Apparently, von Däniken never got to see the library itself. He wrote in his book, The Gold of the Gods, quote, The passages all form perfect right angles. Sometimes they are narrow, sometimes wide. The walls are smooth and often seem to be polished. 
the ceilings are flat and at times look as if they were covered with a kind of glaze. My doubts about the existence of the underground tunnels vanished as if by magic, and I felt tremendously happy. Moritza said passages like those extended for hundreds of miles under the soils of Ecuador and Peru." End quote. We feel the question now is, who went to these unimaginable efforts so far back within history? Why create such a place deep within the Earth with such an intended illusion of natural origin if you did not seek to hide something? Many still believe that the truth is still hidden deep inside its unexplored caverns, a truth that will force us to completely rewrite the history of mankind. Are the legends true surrounding Cuevo de los Teos? Did it once indeed contain an ancient metallic library, left to us by an ancient civilization? We find the evidence to suggest so highly compelling.